Welcome back everyone to the Rec League. We are going to be watching today Team Mountain versus Team Scuttle. I am joined by Phoenix Z from Team Ocean. Say what's up, man. What's up, David? Reunited once more after two seasons. Absolutely. The original Team Ocean squad coming at. Now we're the Z squad with Z at the end of our names. Talking about this match today. So what we're looking at here is we got the 1-1 one one Team Mountain versus the 2-0 Team Scuttle Crab. Coming into this purely by conceptual look at it, what do you think we're going to see today? I think we're going to see more of the same of what Scuttle did last week. Uh, not to say that met that Mountain is, you know, the odd man out, but they looked really good on Scuttle last week. Yeah, they are. Particularly the bot lane with Ted. Absolutely. They are absolutely very, very dangerous in their games. Uh as far as as far as today, we do have a couple things to look at. But as far as uh, Team Scuttle, what are some of your experiences playing versus that dynamic team? Me playing against Scuttle? Yeah. Hmm. It's been about two years since I played against Scuttle Crab. Uh, I know Adoma, and uh, Adoma in the mid lane now. He he's looking pretty good too with that swap over from top lane when I last played him. Yeah, that's but, true. Uh, and it, we're really going to see what he can bring to the table here today. So other than that. We can take a look. I do have a little bit of a matchup screen coming here today. Uh, just give me one second so I can set it up. But what we really have is I want to take a look at the only people that are existing in the same positions <laughs> for this particular week, which is going to end up being Sonic, MNA on Mountain Drake and ADC versus Dark Ted on Team Scuttle. And the, it could not be more different of the scores based on the first week. Darth Ted is rocking a impressive and very impressive total KDA of 44.0. See if Ted can keep it up. Exactly. Versus Sonic <laughs> MNA is 1.6. Just Darth Ted is looking unstoppable in that bot lane right now, with the only difference being that Sonic has a little bit better of a vision score, which is <laughs> not quite enough to hang your hat on. I, I'm very interested to see this bot lane, how they play here, especially uh, the support matchup, because we know Sonic throw the KDA out the window. Ted's a good AD carry. Sonic's a good AD carry. We know that. Exactly Moses true. Moses can hang in the bot lane. This exactly. It's more about matchups and how they're going to play together in the 2v2. And it really comes down to, for, I agree with that, and completely, Team Mountain and Team Scuttle have both done very well in the mid to late game if they can get to that portion of it. So if Team Mountain can hold on versus Team Scuttle's decisiveness, I think they do have a good chance, even with these stats, looking at us in the face. I agree. I think one of the biggest uh, strengths here for Mountain is Unstream in the jungle. Unstream fights extremely well in team fights and in the mid game to late game. Very underrated jungler in the league. Agreed, agreed. And and one of the things about Unstream that I really like to see is that playing with him on the team last season, I can tell you that he is very decisive. He knows a lot about the damage potential of his characters. He plays a lot of these high impact champions. You are 100% correct in that. But at the same time, he's staring across from Endo, our season one, season two champion. So we gotta, you got to know that he has been putting in the time and the effort and is one of those junglers that can really cause the opposing team a headache where he shows up. 100%. No easy matchup here across the board for anybody, especially on stream. And those going to give him a run for his money. Exactly. And so we got, right now we do have a couple, we do have one returning member from the previous team, which is 420BlazeItNerd69 showing up on Team Scuttle again with one of the most preposterous names of all time. As we see a newcomer to the league and Quicksilver Sasha coming in from Team Mountain again, both in the support positions, repping the new people, going to show who each other who is boss in that Love to see it. Love to see new people in the rec league. Absolutely 100% correct with that one. So other than that, it looks like we're going to get us started into the champion select screen here in just a moment. I'm excited to see what's going to happen. I wonder if both teams have done their homework into the opposition because we have a lot of high impact, high quality picks that can be done uh, from each team. What do you uh, expect to be banned here, specifically from Mountain's side? So from Mountain, Scuttle. being taken away from Mountain or on Mountain to take away from Scuttle, which one? I'm talking about like, so you, so you look across the board and you see Ted and he has a ridiculous 44 KDA. Now, are you targeting him on AD carry pool? Or are you just saying, well, I think that was a fluke, we just played better in my lane. One of those things that you can't do with Darth Ted is trying to take away some of his champions, it's really tough. One of the things that made it difficult. So 
It's difficult for Dark Ted is when his support does not have the champions he needs to get it done. But as far as being bans taken away, Skyrockets. We know his champion pool from last season. He's the Garen. He's the Mundo. You used to. He's the difficulty up top. So they take the Garen away from him. We know that the Nocturne's taken away from Unstream because if he ever gets that champion, your whole team is going to die many times. Absolutely. And we see Sasha uh, being targeted for the first time, taking that Thresh away, the playmaking champion that can get Sonic what he needs in order to take over the game. Mundo think you That's good stuff. Thing. I like I like what they're doing thus far. They take away the Mundo. That's the Garen Mundo being taken away from Skyrockets in the top side. So it's interesting to see what Dropic's gonna pick here, because he kinda has ideally the pick of the litter. He's taken away Skyrockets two champions he didn't want to play against. I don't think they pick it early. They want to kind of put him on his third best champ and see what happens. But I like this draft so far. So what we're seeing here is that they might be giving Darth Ted the Caitlyn, which is one of his comfort champions of all time, as Timberland points out in the chat. But we see the Nocturne, or the Nautilus being picked up, which could be for top lane and it could be for bot. Kind of depends. Sivir oh, is another Sivir excellent Nautilus. champion right now. That bouncing blade's just being too much for the opposition once you get that infinity edge. There's crits all over the place. Right, and not a terrible matchup in the Leona support either. Of course, with that spell shield. Exactly, and you also, I'm assuming Nautilus is going to go to the bot lane because Nautilus is also very good into Leona support. But for now, it is still technically a flex. That's true. I'm, I agree with you. It's probably a support Nautilus, but they're not giving away anything technically with these first two picks. And I'm also really interested to see where this Jarvan is going to go, because Jarvan could be played in the top side, like the Earthquake, 80 carry, stomping, top laner Jarvan. Armor pen, beat him up, yeah. Or it could be Unstream, who has played it in the past and was shown to be very successful on it the times that he did play it. Right, his map control and his ganks are excellent, so it's a, it's a good champion for him. I think that's who it's for. We have the Karthus being picked up for the Fox in the mid lane. Right, he has shown that he's cool. able to play that champion very well. He knows the damage potential of that, and I think he he's expecting himself to have a good matchup versus Aguma. You reek of fear! Alright, so taking away the sign here, this will be Nasus top lane for Skyrockets. Oh, that was one of his previous champions. I remember he used to play that uh, a long time and ago, ages right? past. Exactly. In the old days, when he was, uh, that was one of his top lane sub, uh, champions that he's familiar with. Nasus is in a pretty decent spot right now on the top side. Taking away the Scion means he's not going to have a tanky lane bully he's got to deal with. We still don't know where that Jarvan is going, but they're assuming that Jarvan's not going to the top. Ah, come on. What's the worst Shinx thing that could happen? Here against Sonic, I mean, that's, that's par for the course. We all know how Sonic does on Jinx. Oh yeah, that's one of those things where if he if you give him Jinx and he has a good game, he's feeling confident, you're going to find yourself in a very bad position. <laughs> he gets a high KDA with that champion when he's feeling good about it. Yeah, they don't want him shredding through the front line like that, getting the get excited passive and just running through the rest of the team. And, yeah, 100%. So they're taking away the Swain from Aduma. Uh, and put it in the mid lane there, knowing that taking Swain, taking uh, Cassidy could be a thing, but Ziggs looked like it's going to be brought out. I, I love this this Swain ban, by the way, against Adolma. It, it's such an underrated champion for him, and it team fights so well. Exactly, and it's also pretty good in the mid lane versus Karthus. You could be pulling him in, although you don't necessarily want to stand next to Karthus, but the short range of Swain would have been fine, but that's okay. We're not going to see it. We're going to see Ziggs poking away at Karthus, and they're going to play the who can dodge more cues between each team. Sonic the camp with Leon here. That's pretty interesting. It's not a bad matchup at all, but it's not something that he's... Well, he's, he's known for it a little bit. Yeah, he, it's not something that he can really run around and get in the front line like, with Jinx or something like that. That is very Jinx. true, but I have to say, with, with working with Sonic for a number of years, every time he picks up Caitlyn, he's, he always... I think he reminds himself that he's actually good at that champion. Yeah, the mechanics forgets, are there, for sure. <laughs> he forgets that he knows how to play that champion well. Every time when he picks up, he's like, oh yeah, I remember I like this champion a lot. And we have a Kled here. So the Kled in the top side can be a very interesting pick into Nasus. Or perhaps J Jax Jungle? Jax Jungle. Endo here. Yeah, it'll be Endo's Jax here to try to unpack the lanes as early and as often as possible. Yeah, Jax Jungle can definitely be very annoying for this team top. Caitlyn is not going to do great against it. Kled is going to have a hard time against that Jax. So I like to see what Scuttle has brought up here. They have that mid-game Nasus. They have that mid-game uh, power of Ziggs taking towers. Nautilus Sivir is going to be fine. Uh, if Nautilus does get his uh, his 
his iron talons on people and holds them in place. Sivir's gonna get that free boomerang blade off, which is a ton of damage right now in this patch. Yep. Not a lot of disengage here from the side of Malin, a lot of engage. But I, I really like this Kled pick in Anassas, because if he takes Conqueror, he can kind of just bop him early and not let him just sit there and farm as the Nasus, which and that's is probably true. what Skyrox is trying to do. And that's true. If Kled is able to really get the dominance, it is, it's is—it's going to be very difficult for the Nasus to come back in. But if he fails in the lane phase, Nasus can get to a point where Kled will do nothing for him. He'll get so big and so powerful that right. if Kled engages, he's just going to get, like you said, bopped right back to his non scarl form. Right, agreed. The other thing, too, I like with the Kled pick here is it kind of gives you like a little mirror where like they took Sivir, like they can run against us or run away. Let's say Kled, we can run against them, too. You exactly. Know? You're you're right there, and that'll be really fun to see. I hope we get to watch that because Kled and Jarvan, for example, Kled allowing Jarvan to catch up to the team, put him in that earthquake, Karthus damage everywhere. There's, there's potential here on both sides. I'm going to have to give the credit, though, first to uh, Team Scuttle. I think their team comp is a little scarier. Mm -hmm. I think I their team agree. comp has a little more flexibility, you know, they trying to get Nasus and Jax into the fight with Sivir. I think it's going to be a little scarier, so it's going to come down to who's, who makes the plays. So what do you think? Looking at the... You're playing mid lane this season. Looking at the Karthus Ziggs, what do you expect to see? I expect to see Adoma shove Defox in here. Um, I, I haven't seen much here, but I expect Adoma's going to try to use all his mana, shove him in as early as possible. He has TP here, and it looks like, if, if this is correct, Defox is taking Barrier. So, I mean, this this is looking for maybe a, like Adoma to shove in and roam and try to maybe go bot lane and impact other lanes with his ult. Karthus, obviously, we know, can impact every lane with his ult all the time. But I, I still like the Scuttle Comp a lot. Yeah, I absolutely hear that. I think the... Uh... The scuttle, the scuttle comp is going to make it happen. It's, it looks really good. <sighs> it's going to come down to... I'm really interested, though, in this bot lane matchup. I want to see what the Leona Caitlyn can do versus the Sivir Nautilus. I think there's some potential here for a lot of damage to come out. I think Leona taking the Ignite, Nautilus taking the Exhaust. I think it's correct both ways. It's a very volatile lane here because Leona can go in here, but Spell Shield on Sivir, Nautilus is super good at just locking down somebody and saying no. Nope whereas Sonic doesn't want to be anywhere near him. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, agreed. I think there is there is a fair amount of mobility that we have as far as Caitlyn. Uh, Kled has some mobility, and Jarvan we have it as well. But then you have the Jax. Uh, Ziggs is going to be a very interesting choice as well, because having that incredibly far poke damage, if Aduma can land those skill shots, he's going to find himself doing great work, as Caitlyn's going to want to stay far back, but... It's hard to keep track of those bombs while you're having those team fights. Right. And again, if if, uh, if they can get ahead here with the Sivir Ziggs here, Adoma and Dark Ted, this Siege Cop is insane against Towers with Sivir Boomerang Blades, Ricochets, Ziggs Bombs, all those things, not all standing in front. It's so hard to, to fight back that kind of engage or that kind of Siege on, like a say, a Inhibitor Tower, especially with Baron. Yeah, it's it's going to be tough. I'm, I'm very excited for this game. I think it's going to show... Both teams' prowess, they're going to work really hard to see what they can show off here. I'm very interested to see the jungle pathing as well, as Endo is going to really need yes. to make something happen. I'm assuming he's going to be showing up in the top lane, because that's yeah. where he needs to make the most happen. Uh, right. Or Nasus no to matter, fall behind. No matter where he appears, he has to make something happen early, I believe. Absolutely. And that's right. the thing, though. But he is playing Jax, so if he doesn't make it happen early, he has an opportunity to do something late. He can. He can scale. Um... Sorry, I, I misspoke. I was talking about Unstream. If Unstream doesn't really affect this game early, and Endo just sits there and farms up as late game Jax, doesn't look great for Jarvan jumping into a siege team like Sivir, Ziggs, Jax, Nasus, and Nautilus. Oh, you're you're 100 percent right on that one. I, I don't think it's going to end up being. It's not going to be pretty if they uh, if they just kind of let that one go. But the interesting thing is here, Unstream, we know he likes to play these carry junglers. So I would right. not be surprised, instead of a tank Jarvan, if they had a murder Jarvan. Oh, he is. He's, he's Electric Q and Triumph. So, <laughs> <laughs> as we see it right here. And then we see Beatbox here with the the, uh, the red uh, rune page, too. So, I mean, yeah, they, they want to fight. They clearly want to fight. Yeah. Absolutely. And as I so, said, Kled with the Conqueror. Kled with Conqueror is so good now, this new Conqueror doesn't work with everybody but it's like they want to fight you <laughs> this that's the team 
And that's true. So what do you think, chat? We're looking at this map. You're looking at both teams right now. We got Mountain. We got Scuttle. Mountain on the top side, Scuttle on the bottom. We're looking at the skins, looking through the game right now. We have a full game of skins. I could not be more proud of these players. Well done. Money in the bank for Riot What's your Games. your favorite skin here, David? My favorite, skin, favorite skin here? Skin here? Mm. Hmm. One of my favorite ones is probably World Breaker Nasus. I think it looks very cool. I've used you a lot of uh, Godstaff Jacks and stuff in my days, but, like, it's hard because, like, we got Pool Party Caitlyn. We got Barbecue Leona. They're having a chill time in the bot lane. Come on, man. Look at that Pool Party Six. Look at that. Look at that smile. Yeah, he's got, you know, the, uh, the dentist out there. Got to really look at those teeth and just, He's wow. straight trolling. You know, and I appreciate that. <laughs> exactly. All right. 100% Here we go. Straight trolling. So we have it here. Both teams lining up. We got Team Mountain on the blue side. We got Team Scuttle on the red. Let's get ready for game number one. Series number two of Sunday Night Wrecked. From the Rec League. All right. So let's see what they do here, level one. I would expect nothing too crazy as uh, both teams have a reasonable way to engage, but I'm not sure if that's exactly what they want to do here. We see the pings coming out right away. And 420 Blaze, it has that normal hook right away. So, Uh-oh, Sonic is walking himself over. Sonic. Does he spot them? He does. He sees no. all five of them right now. But he's got help on the river. So they know where they are at. There is not going to be any... Funny action. I'm surprised no one dropped a ward in the middle of that rip there. Was, um, yeah, a little bit too, because I, I oh, like D -Fox that. Um, finding himself in a, in a bad position, going through the bit. Sonic walking there as well. That's a nice ward there too. I like that Scuttle had the idea though, just send everybody go here, see if we catch them if we don't. Oh well. D Fox seeing if you can't grab a cheeky Q. Almost gets it. Adolma here. So oh, hits him with Adolma, taking, a, taking a bit of damage. Oops. It's all right. Nothing wrong here with this level one though. Everybody's going to get to the lanes. Couple wards down the bot side river. No worse for wear. And that's all right. You know, that's that's a interesting. You get some information. You get to see where the team started. We know that there's nothing going to be crazy on the top side. Do not have to worry about your blue being stolen. Uh, based on what we got there, I 100% agree. Sometimes just not being invaded against a team who's trying to invade you is a win. Agreed. And it feels you good away, too because your team knows fine. that you did not just give up that first blood immediately. A dual landing some poke in the mid lane. I like to see that. Here comes the battle of the uh, skill shots. Got that Karthus doing the lay waste. And you got a Duma dropping the bouncing bombs. Oh, so Sonic picks up most of that first front part of the wave there with this Q, which is excellent. Drofig and Skyrockets going for it. But I'm here comes Endo with the lane. level 2 gank on the top side right Oof. now. Going in. Gets the flash from Drofig right off the bat. Does have red. And we got Unstream taking the scuttle. We got a little bit. We could have a battle here. Endo versus Unstream in the early game. Although they go their separate ways. Unstream looking to get that farm and going back up. So what do you think about that? Drofig without the flash is going to be a little scary on the top side. Yeah, because the thing about Nasus is he's going to push you in. As best he can to try to stack up, and he's not going to fight you really. But Endo can just make a return gank whenever he wants. Little not that he, he will. But uh, but again, like I was saying before, this Kled with the Conqueror rune. Early Nasus, he can't fight him. And that's true. It it is tough. It is tough for Nasus to be able to do this if he does land both parts of the bear trap on a rope. He will pull a Nasus. That is a a lot of extra damage. You gotta be careful. But we have Endo showing up the bot lane. Gets the flash Ooh, out of really Sonic. Nice Good timing on Sonic's part there. Getting some return damage up. It looks like they're just, they're both agreeing kind of to farm it out here in the top lane. Nobody's really, after that first uh, gank, Dropic says, okay, fine, you got me. Sonic is finding himself, getting himself Ooh, baited in, but Unstream is showing right up. There. They could have the damage on Dark Tide. Gets the flash off. 420 Blaze at Nerd falling very low. Going under tower. First, first blood going to Sonic. Definitely sick work there on the bot lane. Sonic and Quicksilver, Sasha, and Unstream just working together to get that damage. So also, I want to point out there, they had the ripped uh, Scuttler right there mm -hmm. with the vision. And Unstream actually came around and dodged the vision and came for the gank anyway. I'm not sure if he knew it was there, if it was taken or not, but it's, it ends up being perfect because 
420 blaze that goes in a little too hard on Nautilus, and he gets caught out. And that's and that's that's what you want to see. If you're on Team Mountain right now, putting them back, making sure that your bot lane, the one who's gonna have to carry this game, is is getting up and running. Now at this point, if you're Team Mountain, you want to see that top lane going in the way of Team Mountain. If you can get that that Kled being Un, it's impossible for Nasus to show up in lane. That's what you want to see. And then you're on a great path to victory. Skyrock is actually ahead in CS here on Drophic, which is which is nice because Drophic's clearly trying to pressure him with the damage that Clyde can provide with the Doran's Blade and the Conqueror. And he just doesn't care. He just lets it go. <laughs> he's, like, he's just he's stacking. And that's the thing about Nasus, his passive is that every time he deals damage, he absorbs a percentage of it as it goes up in his level. So right now he's just taking the punishment and just getting the CS. And as a top laner, Skyrockets is very consistent. When you see him play, you know that he wants that CS, that equates to items, which ultimately wins him the game. Right, he's playing for the long run, Not I'm not going to fight you level 2 and lose. Exactly. There's no reason for it. And so right now, Drofig needs to play with that in mind. Skyrockets is going for the CS. Punish him accordingly. Uh, you can see that he's trying here. The unfortunate part is that when, when he's shoved in here, he can jump in and kind of hit him a couple times, but ultimately he loses CS for it every time, which is not how you want to play against the Nasus because every CS he gets above you is just more stacks, more damage, more mid game, more late game. And that's exactly right. And we have Endo now taking the Scuttler on the top side, but they did find uh, Jarvan on the ward. But we're going to have Jarvan going here for a quick Mountain Drake. We'll see if they actually get it. At this point, I expect... Nice yeah, dodge. Yeah, that was excellent work. Uh, we're, I'm really looking forward to see uh, Jarvan here. I'm going to want to see Sasha and Sonic to push that wave up and potentially just go quick secure that early Mountain Drake. Could do them a lot of work, but Skyrocket's getting poked down a bit. That's what you want to see Ooh. in the top side. The hook goes wide there, otherwise they could have a nice fight on Sonic. Ooh, the Boomerang Blade gets double hits on Sonic, though. That's going to be really low. Blue Team has slain the Dragon. Unstream gets that Dragon Steal in very quickly. Getting that early Mountain Drake, going to get some early pressure on those towers. We got Skyrockets versus Drofig in the top side. Skyrockets just not letting Drofig do what he wants and not yeah, being afraid so, to stay and fight. Right, so here's the thing. is If he if he sticks around and just autos him with the life steal over, like you were saying, from his passive, he says, I don't care. Come on, let's do it. Whereas exactly. I think Drofig was saying, like, yeah, walk away. I'm going to fight you. Conqueror Clay. He's like, oh, let's go. <laughs> that's not what you want. <laughs> that's the Clay. Not good. You're saying, no, just kidding. Go away. But that's the thing. Uh, if, if Drofig gets more of these fights... You should be calling up Unstream. Unstream, look how far Skyrockets is up. It's Nasus. He right. doesn't have... Yeah, make yeah, him yeah. burn his flash. Make him play defensive. Right. And that and that Jax gank early is kind of setting this up a little bit where he got that level advantage on the Nasus. That's right. But at this point, one thing I do want to point out is Defox is doing a great job in the mid lane getting his CS. As Karthus is exactly what you want. He is not getting poked out by Aduma. Aduma is also doing a good job. But Karthus with that, that money in the bank... Getting going to be as, as fast as he possibly can to get that AP damage. So when he ults, everyone's going to feel it. See, I would say Defox is actually winning this lane harder than you would say. Because he's ahead in CS as Karthus. Hasn't burned any sums. He's Karthus who's scaling hard. And Adoma had to TP back to lane to even keep up in CS. And now he's down, what, 12? Exactly. So Adoma is keeping up in CS. He's getting a CS. But Defox is playing this lane really well. And, and that's what you want to see on Team Mountain. Karthus Fed is going to be where this game starts to get blown wide open. Because anytime you see Darth Ted use his uh, use a spell shield, and Karthus is level 6, and falling low, it's possible that you can get a kill on a Sivir, and you really want to see that. Because that is their primary right, so source of consistent damage. So he, he's got the tier right now, and he's already ahead 5 with a tier. Yeah, it's only going to get worse. He also has a Blasting now. Wand as well. Yeah, it's excellent. This is great. Defox looking hot in the mid lane right now. We got Unstream rolling in to potentially get some gank action off, but he's sitting on a pink ward, which is fine. We got Endo potentially here for the counter gank. Puts the pink ward up. They, they know that this is going on. So right. we, can see some, there, uh, so. we can see some action, but walking again over pink wards. Battle of the Vision. Drawfake's got his uh, TM out early here, so this actually helps him so much to just shove in an assist and say, go ahead, you do your thing, I'll do mine. And that's kind of where he needs to be. He needs to he needs to get that farm off. He needs to make Nasus miss as much as possible. 
The thing, too, uh, for Scuttle here that's so good for Skyrockets, he hasn't even backed yet. He hasn't backed yet. He's ahead 16, 17 CS, and he doesn't care. That's the funny thing about that. He really should co start considering spending that 2,500 gold that's right now. a lot now. of money. <laughs> I think he, if, he, uh, <laughs> if he takes any longer... He could find himself a gank target, but a duel is falling very low. We got Drofix showing up in the mid lane. A lot of damage going out. Gets out, gets dismounted off Scarl, but that was an excellent roam. Making the mid lane get further though. ahead. Drofix says, I don't care. Fine. I'll push you in. Yeah, you're Nasus. Blah, 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 blah. I'll never win here. Oh, wait. I'm in mid lane now. Your mid laner's dead. Exactly. But we have Endo showing up. Un Unstream has to flash immediately in order to make that kill, but. It's possible that Defox could uh, cause a lot of damage here to Endo. As you can see, That's how much damage, damage he does. <laughs> Two hits taken off just under 50%. Sonic and Quicksilver putting some oh, traps up real here. quick. Endo finding himself a difficult on, yeah, position. Going, here, going in on it. it if they get the stun off on Endo, gets the trap off, gets the flash immediately. Good uh, hook from Leona going in. The damage, Quicksilver ends it. Great work on the ultimate. Pushing them back, Blaze it, Nerd, and Dart Ted running for the hills and the safety of their tower. Great Mountain rotations for Mountain. Three O lead. That was sick. I want to give incredible, incredible map presence to Sasha right there. She played that very well. Held off on her E. Just dodged that hook from Blazinger. She is playing with a vengeance. Casual sidestep. No, yeah. not not today. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. Just brush that dirt off your shoulder. No problem. Excellent work. Good rotations from Mountain. Taking the damage. They do have to be careful that Nasus is looking pretty beefy. Buying a Frozen Heart straight up. He is not going for the damage off the mid lane. He does not need the Trinity Force. He's just going to farm forever. So what do you think about the AD carries here in this matchup? Specifically the champions. Because we see here, Sonic's ahead by about 10 CS. And he's got to be up sword. And we have Ted here. He went for a Caulfields and a Pickaxe. Uh, well, never mind here, because Unstream finds Endo out in the jungle and just crushes him. Just, with just goes to town. That's what you want to see. That was there. unfortunate. Bad positioning on Endo's part here is going gonna, is gonna to cost him a lot. He wanted yeah. that ward and that pixel brush, and it just cost him his life. Yeah, absolutely. Unstream doesn't have smite, but this is still free. Very, very here. unexpected for that one. Did I didn't even see that go down. I was not expecting Endo to drop so quickly. I, but other than I, that, we I got think the he went for that ward, and it was just it was just too much. It was like a little one step too far, and Unstream caught it out and said, "No, no, 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 this is my river." Ocean Drake being taken out. That is the first ocean that we're going in for uh, Team Mountain, which is going to be excellent for Defox, able to stay up on that mid lane. Top side, we got Drofig and Skyrocket still going in. I don't think Drofig has. This is the nightmare situation you're looking at here. This is not ideal at all. He has this a is it. Merc treads and a Tiamat. Yeah, this and is not what you want to see. Kled, Kled not being able to do literally anything versus that that frozen heart Nasus in the top side. He is just going to farm till the end of days. How many stacks does he have? Can you see it? Stack count we got going on right now is uh, 273 bonus damage. Oh, cool. Perfect. All right. <laughs> He's looking good. <laughs> Looking really good. He is uh, doubling. Essentially, what you want to think about for Nasus yeah. is oftentimes it is the current time in minutes uh, doubled in uh, in kind of damage. So like 12. I think it's the idea. It's supposed to be like times times 10 or whatever, right? So it's like 12 minutes, like 120 stacks is whatever. You want to see him at 240. And that's about so where he's at. All that math and what you're telling me is that he's Ziggs mad. TP going to the bot side right now. Plenty of damage coming out. But Adulma, Darth Ted, and oh, Blaze an and going in. Sasha gets the three-man like stun up. But the damage is still coming out. Has to go back. Sonic falling low. Blaze it, nerd. Looking to root him in place. The soup, the, the, the death bomb going out. The damage coming out. Sasha falling very low. The triple kill. No one dies. And Scuttle. Well played on that. Go button from Adulma saving the bot lane. So while well, that was an excellent play by Scuttle there in the bot lane to try to take the thing, I think we're going to see more of the same of what we just saw from Skyrockets. He just rushed onto the tower and beat up Drawfig. And that feels really bad. At this Man, point, you got no yeah. flash for Drawfig. You got no TP. But Defox is coming up. Skyrock is going to find himself in a tough position. But Endo was here for the counter gank. Defox is going to find himself. Oh, but he sees it. He finds him. He sees it. He finds does not jump over. Uh oh. Endo is. That was a mechanical misplay. This is not going to go well for him. Yeah, there's too much damage to get out with a mistake like that. And at this point in time, Skyrock is also finding himself in a bad way. He's got two seconds, so we got the flag and drag coming out. He's going to see if he's going to have to dodge it. Here come the he flash, flash does not come out, just accepting yeah, his fate. He'll, he'll give it up. Going down. Position to give it up. Two kills for Karthus. 
Meanwhile, we have nice. Endo here who has the uh, Rift Herald unused yet. Which is excellent. And you see Adulma taking the plating right before it drops off, getting himself that cool 140 That's gold just to bank. Turret. Welcome also to the first turret. But for his hubris, runs oh. right into Sasha. Hello. He's going to have to flash Let's this wall if he's going to want to survive. Oh, perfect. Sasha with the perfectly timed. Perfect, Leona E. <laughs> Could not see it better. The Zenith Blade. Well done. And Sonic rotating, putting himself the Scuttle Crab in the bank just to punctuate that we are killing your team. Adoma had flashed that too, but the Zenith Blade was timed so perfectly. I think as he was about to flash the wall, it caught him, and it's just over there. Yeah, he just let it go, which was smart play on Adulma's part. Save that flash for the time that you know that you're not going to die. If you would have flashed it, the, it would have followed. He does get the mid-tower over it, to be fair. So that is a one-tower lead here to Scuttle. Excellently played. Really well done on the far, part of Mountain. Moving around the map, making the plays happen, making sure that they don't just get things for free. Mountain is not ahead on gold, but they are keeping up because of the plays that they are making. Ted and 420 are waiting here with Endo for a while here. They really, really I think want they this. they have it. Oh, they oh. missed it. <laughs> and that's a flash there from Sonic, but... Ah, uh, and then 420 uh, plays a minion in front it, of the Snarl's hook. hit a minion with his hook. Skyrocket's going in, doing the NASA's damage, but that was a, that's a pretty scary amount of Karthus damage right now. And he is not fully itemized up, so that's going to only get scarier as the game progresses. In terms of resources, though, in that bot play, they didn't really lose too much. Um, they got the flash out of Sonic anyway and essentially traded it for a Sivir Ult, Nautilus Ult, which will be up, obviously, before the flash. Endo uses nothing, and he walks away right away. He understands the play is dead. 420 Blazer Nerd and Darth Ted do not know that if uh, that Unstream is here. They are walking over right now, and he, as you say, they walked up. Aduma walks in, did not know it happened. And here comes the rest they of the map. Endo is there for the counter gank. We have the trip, the oh, double kill for goodness. the damage dealing on stream. Putting it out. Blaze it, nerd, finding himself in a difficult position. Has to flash out. Here comes the teleport. Oh, the Kled ultimate is coming in. They are going to rush into this fight. Dart's head gets knocked up. Blaze it, nerd gets knocked down. That is a four for zero. D Fox putting out a rampage. And, and dropping. The top side, Nasus taking it. it perfectly oh. with the TP. He says, fine, I don't want to play this lane anymore against Nasus. Whatever, let's get a four zero in the bottom lane. The one thing about Nasus, like you said, don't play versus him anymore. He is disgusting. He will keep pushing. But Nasus is one of those champions that even if he is super powerful, the enemy team can shut you down. And that's, I think, what their hope is. You can be real big and strong, but if what are you going to do when it's four versus one? Right. So I think he, that, was a, that was a good call by him to say, I, he's going to take this tower no matter what. I can't fight him anymore right here. Let's just get this huge play here. Let's convert to a Drake, maybe a tower, maybe another tower. So, agreed with that. So, right now, we're going to see what we're looking to pick up here. We got Skyrockets. He is staying. He was about to go back and purchase. He has 1,500 gold in the bank. It's a lot of combat money that he's not leaving there. But Unstream is finding himself, once again, in a position to be very effective. Ooh. Sonic's, Sonic's falling out. very low right now. Unfortunately, gets very low. Unstream, see what he can do. It's a lot of damage. Takes the Boomerang Blade. Uh, falling very low, but Defox is there to back him up. We do have Drofig fighting in the bot lane versus... Uh, skyrocket so there's a lot of action going along right here unfortunately sonic yeah. getting himself caught out that is going to cost him team potentially some towers also because of the rift hill being summoned as soon as sonic goes down not great drofic finding himself in a bad position here i don't think he wants to go in if he does fall off scarl he's going to have to queue out of there Defox rotating to see what they can do. They really do not want to lose this. Although Nasus has been pushing, they should probably rotate their bottom lane to the top side, bringing a Drofig just to absorb the bot lane. They're going to have to do something to rotate around here. They cannot just let Nasus push and get an inhibitor. Right, and the nice thing here we have for Malin, if we're looking at the silver lining, is that Defox is ahead in CS by 20. He's 4-0, and zero, and he's Karthus. Exactly. He As Icicle said in the chat, there. the Karthus is coming online. We do see Darth Ted picking up the blue turret. We see Sonic picking up his own red buff. We could see a little bit of ADC combat. I kind of doubt it will end up happening. But other than that, we got a little bit going on at the top. We're looking at right, a so the bit of rotations here, and I think they're doing what looks, looks, needs to be done. They got to take that top tower down so Nasus just can't go where he pleases. So the game is incredibly close, obviously. We're uh, 900 gold in favor of Scuttle here. Even though the kills are 11 to 5. In terms of Mountain having the more, it's just the, the Scuttle's been rotating better, taking objectives, getting the gold, farming better. So it's actually 
basically tied. The only thing I want to point out here is the three drakes on mountain. One of which is a mountain drake, two of which are ocean drakes. They can sustain the siege from what we were talking about before, the Ziggs Sivir siege against their towers. Two oceans does miles for you there. Oh, absolutely. That's what I mean. Right now, they're able to just sit in Karthus. Like I said, having the double ocean on Karthus is excellent. Being able to just sit there and spam your, spam your abilities, have your mana come back. And we're really looking at right now, it is going to be a little scary. Scuttle is pushing the towers down. They do have four towers to Mountains 1 right now. But all it takes is one insane team fight. Unstream finding himself in a difficult position because he's going to have 420 Blazet Nerd. Uh, getting himself caught out right now. Although there's a this lot. There's a, Nasus. The, Nasus, like you said, this is the 3v1 I was talking about. They have a lot of fights. Skyrockets, oh flashes, and gets the kill on Sonic. He is a big boy. Drofic falling very low. As you can Never see, mind, that, that's not how you beat Nasus. That's that armor is unfortunate, but here comes the damage to beat Nasus. Oh, does not quite get to it, but the dunk coming in. Unstream gets the kill, turning his damage onto Endo. Uh, Aduma is there to fight back. We'll see if Unstream is able to do it. Darthed, Darthed does pick up the kill and the backside on the Kled. Unstream going in. Endo flashes away, saves it wisely, but Aduma has the damage to knock out Unstream. Karthus in the mid lane by himself, pushing. Getting a TP to prevent that tower from going down, but we're seeing some moves done by Scuttle. A lot of flashes there in that fight. Specifically, I saw Ted flash in on to get the kill there on Drawfig, and I'm not sure if he needed it, but these guys want to fight. That was tough. That was a tough one there. It went back and forth. Drofig with the offensive flash into the murder on Sonic. The thing about that is I don't think Sonic was necessarily anticipating how much farm that that Nasus has. The Nasus uh, has 456 bonus damage right now. That is humongous. That is a third of Sonic's health per Q. Also, once once you wither the Caitlyn, it's you chase them forever. Yeah, they're dead. Exactly. So I it's, it's I very difficult. I don't expect you to be slowed that much or trapped that much to be queued twice, but yeah. But that's the that's thing. You takes. also now this now that Nasus does not have flash and Sonic does. So now Sonic is safe from Nasus for the next five minutes at least. So he picks up the executioner's calling right away as soon as he backs before his actual. Uh, zeal item. So uh, he, he doesn't want any of it. Exactly. It, that's one of those things where he's also looking to make sure that... Uh, I guess he's getting the the additional Grievous Wounds. Like he just wants to prevent any of the healing, any of the shenanigans from going down. I'd right. be very interested to see what he goes next. Because it's almost like he does need the zeal item, of course. But he does need that armor penetration if he ever wants to kill Nasus. Unfortunately, because of the way inventories work for AD carries, he's clogged now. He has to kind of take the Z item because he already bought the Kirchi Shard. Um, and he bought the Kirchi Shard first with the dagger. It has to be Rapid Fire Cannon here, and unfortunately, unless he wants to sell something... Blue Team steals the Mountain Drake. Unstream makes it happen. They do make him pay for that, but he takes the Mountain Drake right out from under five noses of Team Scuttle. That was sickness. Good job on Unstream there, really proving that he is has the timing necessary. And Drofig in the top side looking to push this as fast as they can, but could They're we possibly past. see a Baron take right now? I mean, they can step. They can definitely start it. They have the ultimates to fight it. I think this. Yeah, this is yeah. This is just right the Silver Bait. Sonic. Okay, he missed it. Oh no, he missed the. Uh, uh, he missed That's the blast plan. They can go right back to Baron here. Yeah, he he uh, misclicked, and he didn't click the blast plan. He could have popped himself over the wall, but he actually clicked a person instead. You hate to see it. Yeah, that's never never good. But here now they have all right. So we got the three v two, but Unstream is back. He does have a smite up as well, so it is he very possible. Trying to lay damage. But look at this. Scuttle is just milking their 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 positioning here, just allowing themselves to sit near the Baron, knowing that they're gonna have to come contest it. Right. Technically, that's they stopped the Baron. <laughs> and they walked up and they walked away. Yeah, that Mission is very accomplished. Well, very well played on Scuttle. Really looking to uh, punish them for for making some plays. That play right there did cost them a couple extra kills and a couple thousand gold. Karth is still not dying though, sitting with that six hundred gold shutdown, as well as two shutdowns: the four fifty on Nasus and the six fifty on Sivir. 
Ted is slowly getting extremely powerful, though, I want to point out. He's 4-1. and one. He's got a huge bounty. We all know what Sivir does when she takes over a game late game, especially when you're running into the fight with your front line. And we just saw what they did to Sonic there. But they, they pop Sivir ult, ran at him. He flashed. They kill him anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then it, and I don't even think Ted had anything to do with that besides popping a silver roll. That was everybody else just killing him. Yeah, Ted was hit by the uh, the net from Sonic, so he was slowed down. Right. So it gets to the point where now, if if Ted wants to take a fight, he says, "All right, let's go," and they just go. That's true. And Silver <laughs> is already back up. Kill him. Silver is already back up. Unstream has to find himself in a difficult position here too, because Skyrockets and uh, Blizzard Nerd could they could. Uh, Definitely hook him up under tower. And as you see, Adulma is starting to really hurt with those bombs. 50% of Unstream's health, two bombs. Scary time to be a, uh, right. a damage dealing jungler. That doesn't work here when they all stand together under the tower. So they have some positioning. It is a 5v4. It is very possible that Defox, Sasha, and Sonic can cause something. But here comes the fight, as you said. Uh, they see it. Sivir is going in. Here comes Ted the... says go, and they just go. That's an excellent ult there from Sasha to stop that engage right in its tracks. Yeah, well done. They also That was two ultimates blown. That was the Sivir ultimate and the Nautilus ultimate, so they're not locking down another person in place. I have to be careful here. They could get a pretty big knockup. If the Karthus was available in that choke point, I would have almost suggested that they go for that fight. I would agree, because you have to remember here, they have two oceans and two mountains. If they can get anything... In terms of a decent team fight, taking Baron's not difficult at all for this team. Skyrockets leading the charge. Defox finding that Nasus there. The perfect blue trinket finding them all in range. Ooh. Skyrockets gets the flash wither going in hard. Here comes the ultimate going down. Tons of damage coming out of the Skyrockets, but Defox gets the Zhonya's out. Ooh, that was a lot of shutdown gold going to the way of Ziggs. The team fight continuing. Drofik coming from the backside. Damage coming out from Karthus, but not enough to close it out. It is a 3-for-1 currently, a 4-for-1 currently. Sasha alone in the base defense. This base is going to be cracked open. Endo pulling the trigger with a flash. Q into it, getting the stun up Darth Head, and Endo pulling off the ace. This could be a quick victory here. I think the death timers are a little too long. They're just going to push it for the victory. I think Scuttle here is going to take this game off a Skyrocket's flash over the wall onto Defox to just cue him over and over again. The flash <laughs> wither into the fight in that one and really absorbing all of that. He had the Frozen Heart. He has the Spectre's Cow and the Trinity Force. The defense coming out just slightly too late. Team Scuttle taking Team 1 in a quick finish accelerated from a, petition, a position I did not anticipate seeing. What did Scuttle you think about the end of that game? Phoenix. Four dragons. And Defox with a five and one kill score up in CS, instantly lose the game off one team fight. Uh, and that's, you know, Welcome you really hate legends. to see that one <laughs> just coming in so quickly. But other than that, we're just gonna have to send it off to just a couple minute break as we be get back into this game. Well done on the side of Team Scuttlecrab. We will be right back.
Welcome back to the Wrecked League series number two, game number two of Mountain versus Scuttle. I'm sitting here with my boy Phoenix Z, and we are slow sipping whiskey, but they were not slow in the end of that game. They quickened that up. Like, what'd you think? We have a great one on our hands here. That could have gone either way. 13 to 16, only a 2,000 gold lead as it ended. No Baron taken at all. And we get a flash over the wall by Nasus, who goes right onto, I think it was Sonic. And then they just run through the base. Oh, yeah. They, they flash into uh, <laughs> D-Fox. Into D-Fox, yeah. And then just take the base. It's over. Done. Yeah, that, that was a really well-timed play. Good teamwork. Good follow-up from the teams there. The rotations were on point. But I have to say, it did not look hopeless for Mountain. Not that could have all, easily course, gone yeah. in the other direction had that team fight just been a little bit more clean. And honestly, I am incredibly impressed by Sasha. The support on Mountain was on fire that game, hitting the correct targets, just disengaging, engaging. I'm really excited to see more from, from that bot lane on Mountain right now. A triple Leona stun into three of them in the river to disengage from Baron. You can't ask more than that. <laughs> exactly. And also, getting the kills as they're trying to run away, it's looking good. But with that as in mind, we do have to comment that Scuttle is looking very strong. They're able yeah. to. That, that top laner, how are you going to answer that? I'm not really sure. Well, how they tried to answer, as I saw, there were four drakes on mountainside. Two oceans, two mountains. It didn't translate in anything, but like the objective control from, from Scuttle was not great. They kind of just gave everything up and said, let's, let's like win the lanes and then rush down and kill them. If it works, it works. But, you know, if there is a weakness I saw in that game, they were giving up a lot of stuff. And that's true. So so specifically, where do you think that stuff comes from? Is it from, do you think, is that something where Endo is going to have to step it up and try to take some more objectives? Is that something that we, what, what do we think we're going to need to see? Who's going to need to step well, it up in order to? I don't, I don't know if it's specifically like a, team problem or any problem at all i think it was more about the mid lane and how adomo was trying to roam and affect other lanes and contest kills and towers whereas defox on the karthus said fine i'll just push my lane and then get a little bit fed and then i'll contest you for objectives because i'm karthus and did a good job at that i think if that game would have gone another 10 minutes it would have been a different story oh he played excellently yeah that karthus would have been very online and very difficult to take care of so other than that, we're just looking to get everyone into the game right now. We're getting the uh, the teams loaded in, so we can see what we're gonna what we're gonna find from game number two. I think too one of the things for Mountain with the comp that they had, that they went a little too hard at that late game, where specifically you you drafted that comp to be a late game carry comp, and then you got caught out. And it wasn't that you got you just got caught out; you fought it anyway, and then they ended it really early. Like, yes. you want Caitlyn and Karthus to go beyond 26 minutes of a game. Exactly. You definitely want that five-item, six-item Caitlyn. It'll be really hard to deal with. But the, the hard part about that, I think, is Skyrockets really played that extremely well. Oh, of course. He, Had he that, uh, that immediately starting with the Frozen Heart, did not get greedy with it, did not try to go for the Trinity Force as often as the first pickup for Nasus. Amazing Just decided by, to by shut him. down the damage of the opposing team so it can continue farming. Frozen Heart against Kled early with the Conqueror. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. And then exactly. he just stacked up the rest of the game. Exactly. Well well played on on Skyrocket's part in order to really put himself out there and really be that frontline tank needed as a Nasus as well. Not often considered the you know, the tank people. Often he's a split pusher, but well played. But if you can't kill him, he's a tank. <laughs> yeah. So then do you think... What do you think the band changes are going to end up being? Does any team need to address something that the other team it's, is doing? It's hard to say because you don't really want to ban Nasus out here because it's not like you can't beat it. It's more like you didn't do it right because they didn't pressure him at all. There was not a uh, I, there was one gang top lane early where it just he kind of turned around and like outplayed them, which is like that happens. That happens to everybody. But, like, I, I don't think there was anything wrong with Mountain's comp. They didn't execute it correctly. But, th like, there was no draft problems is what I'm saying. That's true. That's true. And that's that's what I mean. I don't really know if anything is really going to change in our champ select. Maybe it might come down to which AD carries get picked up. I would but say, I wonder yeah. what, the, what we're going to see. Maybe Sibber, they, they ban here because 
um, one of the problems. It's not like uh, that, you know, Ted crushed Sivir. Like, he did. He did really well. But it's not like Sivir won the game. It's just that it's probably something that they don't want to play against. Like, eh, he hits R, they run at us, they win. Yeah, I don't know. It, that's what I mean. It's going to come down to, I think, the, the priority picks. Because what we were talking about before is that Sibber had the R to get her team in. But then they had the Kled R to do the same thing. They never did. They never got the chance because the lanes were behind. You know, the objectives were not there. They got the dragons, but, you know, towers and all that stuff. It's, it's hard to play into a comp like that. Yeah, 100% agreed with that one. And to say uh, what we got here, we are sending it over into the champion select. And we are going to... Is that the second Thresh Man against Sasha? I think so. They really don't want to see it. And to be honest with you, if her Thresh is, is better than her uh, Leona, I don't think anyone wants to see that the remainder of the season. That Leona was, was pretty tight, I gotta say. Agreed. Agreed. The, uh, unfortunately, it was more about disengage than engage, which is kind of like Leon can do both. But if you're forced to disengage, it's like you're not doing exactly as much as you can. But I, I, I like this ban here for Mundo. They just don't want that lean again where he's just going to sit there and farm. And Skyrock is going to say, I don't care about your team. Well, that's understandable. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely understandable. Like you, you don't want to see the. Uh, you just don't want to see that coming out. You know, you're you're trying to have a good time. You're trying to farm well. Right, and it's not like it's Nasus where he'll kill you, but at the same time, it's Mundo where he's like, if oh, okay, if he gets ahead again, we just never kill him. <laughs> at the same time, it's like okay, so, oops. Yeah, <laughs> precisely right. So we'll flip around. I'll get the uh, interface flipped over. I had it. In a particular way, Scuttle coming on the left side of your screen for those of you watching Mountain actually on the right side of the screen. And they did not like that Karthus. That's a Karthus ban. And I and I like that Karthus ban. He played really, really well. He was four and one. His damage was up high. Unfortunately, the game ended too soon for him to have an impact. And that's true. Like it's really just What are you gonna do about that Karthus if you let him have it? He's just gonna get really disgusting with it and you know, best right. of luck to you. If it, if it goes late, right. Which it didn't, so they didn't have to worry about it. But, but here yeah, we so go. We see the Garen not. pickup. Hello, Skyrockets. We've missed you. <laughs> <laughs> I like to see that, though. I think, again, one all of right. those all-star, just kind of good top lane champions. All right, so Leona, again, I completely agree. That's It's great. Sasha really showed that she can pull the trigger. And I, and I wonder if she's the one doing the shot calling, if she's deciding when to go in, if it's the team going together, but she did a great job. And all, all the same. And oh my goodness, they gave Unstream the Nocturne. So like I said before, she was using it before to disengage as Leona because they were behind a little bit. With Nocturne, you can use it to engage actually and kind of flip the table on them and say, all right, fine. It's still Leona, but I'm actually doing a different role. I'm not necessarily healing for my champions i'm getting yours exactly and i'm sitting here just shaking my head slightly because when you give unstream uh nocturne it's exactly what he wanted yeah it's really oh, just okay. <sighs> Oof. i don't i don't dislike it i just don't i don't know enough about this matchup where is he going to be able to push garen out yeah, agreed. I mean, it's it's looking really scary. We got the bully bear coming out. Please tell me that's a bully bear jungle. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's a bully bear top lane, right? Because Unstream's playing Nocturne in the jungle. Right. So I, 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 like I said, I don't know enough about the matchups. Is, can he fight Garen to push him out? I think it's possible. I think there's uh, the the nice thing about bully bear is that especially in the beginning of the game, bully bear's passive allows him to really brawl with Garen. So. Until Garen gets six and gets the execute, Bully Bear is going to be very hard to kill. It is also possible that if Skyrockets mistimes his ultimate ability, while right, Bully Bear has a passive yeah. up, he could not execute him, and then he's in a world of hurt. Right, and this is the second uh, Cassidy ban against Keepbox. Or, or, sorry, against Adoma. And this is the second Jinx ban against Sonic, so not too much surprise there. Yeah, I'm really interested to see what we're going to go here. So they have the Sivir Nautilus lane again in the bot side. 
Kind of running that one back, knowing that they're pecking Nautilus into the Leona. And I think there was a couple missed opportunities from the Nautilus in the previous game for uh, 420 Blaze at Nerd 69. But mostly I think those are just bad luck scenarios. And if, where, you, know, if you didn't hit a minion, they might have gotten a double kill sort of thing. Right, yeah, exactly. And I'm, I'm looking at uh, looking at Robiath in the chat, talking about, let's see the Djinn. I want to see if that comes back out. I want to see what, what they're going to end up doing here because... Uh, it's really interesting. Sonic has shown that he can play that champion very well. I'm, I hope to see it someday because he's just such a joy to watch watch on that champion. I mean, if you haven't seen it, he was on a Protato Monster video of like best plays of the league. I think one week. Sick. Right, so we're looking um, from Mountaineer, Lucian, a great pick here. Because they're looking to like front to back team fight here with a huge tank line. Lucian. Uh, but Goodness. the tunnel there. Also, they're just they're gonna match here. Oh, the Zillion. Oh no, Zoma. that spells that spells. Ugh, that is not good when you have a Nocturne. You do not want to see a Zillion on the opponent's opposing team. A great last pick there. They hit it for the final one. Well done. I have to. I'm gonna give credit to a Duel for that one because you know he was sitting there racking his brain for what could I possibly pick in the mid lane that would ruin the fun of Mountain, and that is the perfect champion for that. Oof. That's but I like the Malzahar though. That is a signature champion of D Fox. This is gonna be a good, like a really good one. Well, they haven't swapped yet here for top and support. Let's see. Okay, there we go. I would really <laughs> highly doubt that Drowfig would just be like, "I'm taking Leona." Thank you for hey, your man. excellent play last game. I'll be taking that. We can have Volley Bear. We have so a couple things I want to point out. Jump into this game. Did not speak about it enough during the actual championship selection phase, but we got Endo back on his Trundle pick. We know that he is good at that champion. He's right. played it to great effect. He's caused me plenty of headaches in the top lane when we played against it, and you know he's going to be causing Volibear a lot of headaches. He does not have a dash over that pillar. It's going to be a tough time for Drofig in the also, top lane versus Garen Skyrock. here. The speed that they have here with Sibra Zillion to just get on whoever they want to get on. Like Lucian has a dash, sure. Malzar has a spell shield, sure. If they can get the engage with the silver ult and then Zillion speed, we can get some nutty fights here. Oh, absolutely. I, I love to see that too. You really, really love to see the, uh, the what the Zillion can do. It's one of those champions that really just wins oftentimes. If, if you play it right, there's just almost nothing that the enemy team can do to stop you and your team fighting prowess. Especially yeah, the if they time. don't pour on the pressure. If you play it wrong, <laughs> it does almost nothing. <laughs> exactly. And then your team comp is kind of falls apart. But I, I think that they have a, a good plan here. This draft from Scuttle is actually really nice. It's a very, very clear front to back team fighting Sibir ult in, and we catch them, we kill them. And that's true. It's true. It's it is front front to back. You're exactly right. I think it's gonna be it's going to be really interesting because Zillion can both speed up like the Garen and the Trundle and the Nautilus and so on, but could also slow down somebody that you catch so they right. will never get away. Nautilus plus Zillion means your target is moving. Not only are they rooted forever, but they're also moving at a 90% movement deficit for a long time. At the same time, Sivir sits there in the back line, completely safe. Ricochets off everybody, kills everybody, and then Zillion says, oh, well, I have an ult anyway, in case you get there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good job. Well, good catch, but uh, you didn't do anything. Sorry. But yeah, not today. That's where it's at. But let's talk about Team Mountain. Let's talk about what their team fight can be. Volibear going in will allow Nocturne to play aggressive. They're going to have a big tank and an assassin in the back line. Melzahar is able to pick off characters like Zillion. I'm glad you have that ult. But you, if you're dead, you can't use it. Right, same. And then if, if they can be on the front foot here with like Nocturne, Malzahar, and they're the guys like Flash, Malzahar, all, all that stuff... It's excellent because then you just get the front foot ahead. You get you go into like a you kill one of them. Doesn't matter who it is, and True. then you have a four v five, and all of a sudden that several looks really bad because now you're running away. Exactly, and I'm really wondering where the damage is going to come from in this comp. It really looks like Sivir is going to be doing the vast lion share of the damage in this. Zillion can do some work, and if he gets very far ahead, then he can definitely be a carry. But I. I'm really, I'm really nervous for the team. Unless Garen goes a little more offensive or Trundle goes offensive, we're looking at uh, not too many damage sources. Whereas opposed to, 
Volibear, Nocturne, Malzahar, Lucian all do plenty of damage by themselves, and Leona just amplifies all of that. Right. So this is, a, an, again, a very volatile team fight here where it's all about execution here. So if Dark Ted can get the support of his front line to move forward and just start shredding them, and they, they're running away, well, it's over. You've already lost. Exactly. I'm really looking forward to seeing that. I want to see what Darth Ted can do. Putting putting the team in his backpack, put him on his back, see if Adulma can help out with those speed ups and revives. Right. At the same time, though, if, if uh, Mountain gets the, the jump on them with Nocturne Malzahar, it's it's over the other way. We don't care you're going in, we're going in first. Yeah, it's so, so true. So other than that, we are going to be transitioning into game number two, Scuttle versus Mountain. Once again, we have everyone rocking the skins. Let's see what we got this time around. What do you think when you're looking at these skins? Obviously, Project Lucian, a personal favorite of mine. Moses, thank you. Definitely fantastic. Sonic as Moses rocking that skin out. We got the Barbecue Leona coming to the back, sizzling the competition. Battle Boss Mazlahar, Frozen Terror Nocturne, as he is going to be a terror on Nocturne. And we got the Thunderlord on the Volley Bear versus the God King Garen. Going to be busting out those double swords. Junkyard Trundle, a personal not favorite of mine. Thank you, Endo. <laughs> Old Saint so Zillion seeing? rocking those Christmas clocks all over the place. Victorious Sivir and the World Breaker Nautilus. I love seeing all these different skins coming out. What do you think about Masteries here? Anything that stands out to you besides... I would say Endo taking Conqueror on Trundle. Uh, I think that's an interesting one, considering that they have the adaptive damage with the uh, true damage con or damage converted to true, which is going to make and them very hard to kill. Uh, Garen okay. going for the poke situation with the Grasp of the Undying. He's just going to go and poke with a Q and run away. Which I think is a, uh, a fine choice. Hey, man, you tell me. <laughs> I, don't, I never played Garen in my life. Oh, you should. You should definitely play Garen. You could totally play Garen in the middle role. You could play him in ADC. He's a good time. All right, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Next you could, if you have the right comp, I'm just telling you. He's a fun champion. He has no mana, so you just kind of do your thing. You know, you run around. Ooh, no mana. Ooh, I'll, I'll play Garen mid lane next game. Exactly. Give it a try. You play Garen mid lane versus a lot of mages, especially mages that they don't have any sort of great uh, escape. <laughs> You're just going to sword them to the face. So let's see it, Chad. I have not seen enough of. Do you want... Exclamation point mountain, or you want exclamation point scuttle? Who's taking this game? Is it going to be a 2-0 sweep for scuttle? Or are we see in the curse of the mountain, Drake, which is they go 1-1 one and one each week until the end. Hey, nothing wrong with 1-1. One and one. That game was super close, game one, until it kind of got busted open with that play at the end. So we see the mountain spots out what's going on in the mid lane, putting the wards up there. Defox seeing... Seeing the situation, 420 Blazing Nerds, not knowing he's walking over a ward, but that is well done. We are not going to see any first bloods, I think, today. Very oh. interesting way that they invaded, too. Also, Black great Black job Black. on Sonic to uh, use Lucian's passive to correctly take the uh, take the ward. Oh, oh. Ah, it's, it was close. It was close. There we go. I see some, I see some stuff in the chat. Very good. Very good. So other than that, we have the minion spawn. We have them fanned out. They're looking to see what they can do this time around. Skyrocket sitting there with this signature champion, flashing the God King uh, flare. Bringing out his best friend, the lion. Looking good. Sonic already ahead on CS, obviously. <laughs> As per Russian usual. Lane. Yeah. Likes the CS well. But here we go. So we got D-Fox in the mid lane and his champion. I'm really interested to see what this matchup is all about. Because right, the so Malzahar can, can do a lot of work. So that ward survives on blue. They know they're there. They know exactly what the timer's going to be. They know exactly when they're going to be there at bot lane. And you got to unstream on this Nocturne is a terror. If you are not prepared, if you do not have your wards up, you are going to get a Nocturne appearing in your lane in the earliest time. So the hey, level 2 endo gang, 420 Blazing Nerd, pretending to be AFK, walking in. Sonic could have to blow flash at uh, level 1. Early flash there. Endo with the cheeky level two gank. He's gonna take that dark Ted uh uh boomerang blade too. Both sides. No Not good. Exactly that feels bad for Sonic. He's gonna have to play very, very scary. Uh very scared here. 
but that's okay as long as they know that uh, that all they have to do is just focus on uh, focus on making sure. Oh, oh. I don't know if he's going to put a steal on that scuttle or. No, nah, nah, they got they picked it up for uh, blue team. Trundle picked it up. Look to try though. Look to make it so it wasn't free. But Drofig takes some damage from Skyrockets on the top side too. Really interested to see which of these lanes play out because Defox right now is the one that we're going to be looking at to potentially win this lane phase. Right, and he can push this lane really hard. Oh, we have Endo here. On Endo and Unstream finding each other. This is not great. Defox looking to back up his jungler. Endo has red buff. Yeah, exactly. And Unstream does not, which is why uh, Trundle was able to just cons just beat down that uh, that Nocturne. So other than that, Skyrocket's doing what Skyrocket's does best. And if you gave him the Garen, you know he's going to be CSing almost perfectly. In this lane, actually, even though Sonic had to flash and take a bunch of damage, is pretty evened out. He's actually ahead. Ted used a lot of his mana to push that up uh, and the gank, too. Ooh, nice good dodge there from Sonic, although it is using some of his mana. Right. So other than that, we got Drofig. It's going to be, like you said, we just saw in the top lane there. That was Garen using, doing what he does, Grasp the Undying. Waiting for the cooldown, going in, hitting the decisive strike on Volibear, and backing up. Ooh, Hook landed on Sonic, falling dog. very low. Double half of the Boomerang Blade has to back up. This might be just go back and get your mana back. Otherwise, you're going to get flashed on right now. Oh, he's staying. Yeah, you gotta, you got to be really careful with that. that I don't is... think Ted has enough for Q, but if he does, Boomerang Blade I mean, actually just can kill Sonic right here. Blaze Nerd has his flash. So if, so if he goes in, if Sonic walks up too far... Nautilus just flashes in, takes a tower shot or two, but Sonic is rooted. He's just dead. He'll have right, to heal. Sonic says, all right, yeah, you're right. All right, bye. <clears throat> exactly. He's like, all right. Unfortunately, though, they got to push. Then they may even take damage on the plate here. I heard you're ratty. That's fine. All right, I pay attention. He was listening to me uh, three minutes in the future on the stream. So other than that, we got Drumstick looking to make some fights here. We're going to have to see him do something. To, there we go. Versus Skyrockets. Getting the gank off, although Endo here. shows up to ruin that... Uh, damage attempt. There's the pillar. A lot of damage being put on Drofig. Endo making his mark and his presence known in the top side, while Unstream is uh, farming away. And it's a safe gank, right? Because they know that bot lane just went back. Exactly. Malzar is actually getting shoved in by Adoma here. So Endo's gank there is free, just for the damage, for the pressure. Exactly. And it's also, the nice thing is that Drofig was in a great position. He was going to flip the Garen. He was going to do a lot of damage. Uh, he was going to be in a, a not in a great position, but he would have caused the Garen to be um, kind of in a tough spot. But speaking of which, the Garen, again, going in, hitting the decisive strike and moving around. Unstream going, Unstream going back. He is level four. So we're looking close. He's got to get to that level six spot. But Sasha and, and Sonic just taking a lot of damage on this tower already. They have, they have Endo coming down here. And remember that Sonic still doesn't have Flash. Yeah, he's going to have to get out of here pretty quickly. He's going to have to do some dodging, getting to the minion wave, looking to kite backwards. Misses it. He lands oh, the hook. This, this is going to be a dead Sonic right now. There's no way he's getting out of this one. Might blow the heel. Flash coming out Ooh. from Endo. Two flashes. Actually, three flashes at the same time. All three, fl all three flashes <laughs> for that kill. <laughs> he's dead. Well, that's the thing. You blow your flash. You expend yourself. And that's what it goes into. So what do you think now? Three flashes taken. What has to happen here? What do you think we're going to see from Scuttle? How are they going to make this this uh, lead go further? So here's a real thing. In that kind of fight there, it's really hard to keep track of who flash, especially when all three of them literally flash at the exact same second. We might They might not have the timers on all of them. Like, I, I would say, okay, yeah, Ted flash. But, like, they they might not know that about 420 Blaze and Endo. But and, we have a contest that's going here. here. Let's talk about we got Sasha going in, doing the fighting on trying to kill Endo, but does not get the kill off. Now trying to get out of there. Endo falling very low. People just going down. Stop. Zillion saving it. The Darth Ted chasing down Unstream. Unstream not quite level six yet, so not able to get it done. Trying to do as much damage as he can, but the boomerang blade gets Man, the kill. That was a That's tragedy. Well, he's got a pickaxe now. That was a tragedy for a team mountain there. Ooh, D Although Defox is looking to do some extra work, but Endo's yeah, showing Endo's up, gonna be here. seeing what they can do. I wonder if Defox can try to do the two v one. I think he's going to fall no very low. Left. Sonic here to do the backup. Sonic there, being there saves the splash, which is nice. Yeah, that was that was definitely necessary, but 
a, again, a tragedy for the rest of the team. Drofig and uh, Skyrockets topside on the island right now. Drofig going for the Bomby Cinder first versus any armor, which um, is the case generally for... Uh, I think he should be ulting right now and just fighting Skyrockets in that cannon wave, but... Ooh, Sonic's a little too far here, but he's going to live it. Nice stun from Sasha there. But Sonic's still playing with fire. Yeah, he is definitely does does not care about all this uh, damage possibly coming out. Drofig and Skyrockets here fighting, but as you can see, Skyrockets picked up some offense first, and with no armor, Bully Bisque be taking a lot of damage. Right, Drofig's just looking to push the wave there with that Bomby Cinder. I don't think he wants to fight them all, especially against that page. I was looking more towards the bot lane. Look at these backs here as they come through. We have Ted here with a BF and a Pickaxe to a Vamp Scepter and a Longsword. Not going to go well, but what we do have, finally, for Team Mountain, for those of you who are rooting for Team Mountain, Nocturne is 6. So this Sound is going to be it. We're going to see one, probably two uh, two plates being knocked down here, which is going to be a fair amount of money there right. in the pockets. 80 gold per person. Not looking too good. Unstream is, is around the bottom. Sasha is also here. Yep. Sasha's not 6, They're rotating though. down here to try to get a catch. It's so hard to catch a stipper, though, with that ricochet and the spell shield. Yeah, absolutely. And so Sonic is farming here. up. Unstream is available. Defox is being chased down from the mid lane into the river. Nocturne showing up, putting on the damage. Oh, the Aduma gets the ultimate off onto Endo, but Endo is falling very low, followed up immediately by the Defox. Beautifully putting done. on the they ultimate. There was perfect. Too. He has no flash. There is no ultimate for Aduma. He is going down. There's going to be a double kill for the Nocturne. Sasha is oh, still in the front line. Ted. Going to be falling very low. Blaze it. Blaze it Nerd 69 is, is looking there, but Dark Ted and them are backing up. The Boomerang Blade hitting Unstream twice. But as you can see, that was a double return kill from Mountain. Well played hey, on their well, part. They'll just walk away with a two for zero. Oh, Skyrockets Oh, in the here. top side. That was oh, so man. close. Skyrockets versus Drofig. They falls very low. Has to flash away from the minion damage in order to save his life. Expecting the Triumph to come save him. That was... I don't know if he needed to flash that one. I but don't think he did, but, you know. He, he was, he, you know what? He yeah, just guy's wanted dead to make sure. Alive, so. Exactly. Now with oh, the Bully Bear. Here on the 420 plays it. Very nice here. The thing about Bully Bear right now is although he is getting a ton of health, which is good for Bully Bear, his bite stacks on that, and so does his passive. He needs some sort of armor to prevent Garen from shredding through all that health. And you're right. He went for the Giant Spell second after the Bomby Cinder, so he's just stacking all health. Exactly. And this is a Garen who is leveling up his Judgment, which is a spin. So he's spinning to win really hard. He is not leveling up his Q, which a lot of Garens like to do for the poke damage. So instead, he's just looking to fight, and he wants to, you to stay there. So knowing that, taking the damage from that spin, you're going to need that armor, or else it's going to be painful every time. Especially after he has one or two more waves, and he has Black Lever as his first item. Ooh, Garen, though, flipped nice into the flip. turret range, and we have Nocturne on the top side. It is possible that we will see a fight going in, but Garen uses his Decisive Strike, finding himself in a difficult position. Drop we could see a gank here on the top. Up. Only a couple seconds. One stream showing up yep. on the thing. Skyrockets being flipped back in. Nocturne tags him with the Q. Damage going down. We have the ultimate going in. Skyrockets falling very low, walking behind the tower. Oh, Drofigus does not have his ultimate, yeah. and Skyrockets gets out with the slimmest of margins. But we got a fight in the bot side. Quicksilver Sasha going down. Hits the double stun. Endo going in for the damage, saving it Beautiful up there, old, falling very low yeah. to the tower. Dartek gets the final hit off on there. Heartbreaking for Sasha under the tower. So other than that, we are just seeing fights all over the map. Unfortunately, Sonic and Sasha fighting without their jungler support, knowing that they were top. And you know what? In the 3v2, that actually was played pretty well for what they had. Again, the slimmest of margins. They had the, because of the pickaxe BF, Dark Ted was able to get that enough damage to just get the final hit off. He's gotten thin the edge already here. And we still have Sonic just sitting on the damn scepter. Which is unfortunate because Sonic is really at a tough spot right now. When you're looking at 1,100 gold, he really needs to either pick up the BF or figure out what, what he's trying to pick up here. I'm not sure what he's doing with Lucian, but... Well, he wants the Bork, but the, the only problem is that when you're that behind, Cutlass is not going to do anything against full Infinity Edge. That is very true. Full Infinity Edge finish, finished at 12 minutes into the game. Darth Ted playing it out very nicely. So we got, let's let's check out what we got here. What do you think we're seeing? Let's give, give me the rundown of what the map is looking like so much. Well, in terms of warding here, 
I have to say that Mountain is actually has some pretty good wards here in, in terms of uh, the entrances to their jungle and the river. They have a ward on Drake right now. And they're, they're trying to, as you see, four of them down the bot side of the map. They want to prioritize those objectives like they did last game. The problem is that the lanes aren't going as well. Sasha gets the hit off on the, here. gets the flash out of it. Flash coming from Unstream, gonna Unstream get the fear off. Then the Darth Ted gonna get he the kill. Shut down. Six hundred gold on the Nocturne now. is huge. So I think they rotate up. Yeah, they already brought D Fox down. They're gonna take the Shrag. Cloud is pretty good for them, to be fair. Yeah, that's that's definitely a, one of the things they are looking for. Defox does want that to help his rotations. They definitely want Unstream to be able to get into position as best exactly. as possible. Gonna be matching. Fortnite Blaze is in trouble here. One more dash into auto. Oh, okay. So Sonic doesn't want to risk it. He also he doesn't have the vision that he needs because you see here Endo is actually on Rift Herald right now, and nobody knows it. Red team takes the dragon, but I was watching topside. Skyrock was looking to do a tower dive onto Drofik, but Drofik is going back. Even with this, I don't know about that one with the cannon wave. This is going to be turret plating, so you're going to get Skyrock. It's a bunch of money. Although Sonic and Silver do take another thing. I think that they actually lose that fight here on Mountain because they got the plating a little bit, but Skyrock gets plating too, and then they trade the dragon for the Rift, and this is just going to be a top. Rift Herald's about to give them some plates. Perfect timing on that Rift Hail. Takes all the Nautilus plates down from the top side. Easily. Well done. They got themselves some money on that one. They're now 3,000 gold and ahead, and they have a big the squad at the top of the top doing. side. But we got some fights going on. We got Sasha falling very low. Blaze it Nerd is also there. Darth Ted going down. Tell me what happened. Were you watching that? I was watching that. That was a, that was a really nice. Ted got uh, basically just layer CC'd after he blew his spell shield. The perfect, the fear into Leona, and then you know Sonic gets him with illusion damage. And they're that's finding himself in a rough position right now. But D Fox and Drofik there. Gold. But you're right. The the tier two in top lane is looking really, really ugly. And that's the thing. It just looks like Drofig is having a hard time in the top lane versus Skyrocket's Garen. He's not doing terribly. He's only down ten CS. Right. It's not like he's kill. not farming. But he really, the thing is right now, he still has a single cloth armor versus that Garen. So you know he's not going to be able to make that fight happen. Versus Garen's black cleaver. It's not going to go well for you. And he also has a ninja tabby. So those auto attacks, not going to do so well. It's a tough spot for Volibear. And, yeah, and they got a good credit to Skyrockets. Pushing against him. Yeah, I'm not gonna sure. I don't not sure what we're gonna see out of this one here because we got Dart Ted finding himself in a hard position. Here comes the Nocturne coming in, S yeah, spell shielded that. But once again, Unstream is there. The but there is enough CC to pull him down. The Garen the is there to alive. execute. The stun misses out this time from Sasha. Unfortunately, trying to keep him under the tower. But the Garen is coming in for the extra damage. Flashes in for the double. Gets the shutdown onto Sasha, which is 400 gold. Not quite the person you're looking for, but one thing down. Drofing on the top side, taking the tower. Is a response. Whew. So this 10 is 20 should have this turret pretty easily here. Sasha can't defend this by herself. Yeah, unfortunately not, especially because neither of them have inter have uh, passive damage, so it's not like she could just like walk up to them, make the tower hit them, and then stun them under the tower range. Also, interestingly enough, neither of the mid laners moved at all for that fight. Drofig versus Endo in the top side. Drofig's going to have to get out of this tower jumps. range. Very much in trouble. <laughs> Drill Fig doing the spamming the laugh animation while Endo, sp Endo hits him with the fizz emote afterwards. Whoops. All right, so now we got the rotation. This is the scuttle special. You take a tower, what do you do with it? You rotate to the other lane and take a tower. And then you rotate to the third lane and you take the tower. Right. And they already have tier one bot, or top, sorry, because of the Rift Child. And that tier two is looking pretty questionable as far as the, the amount of damage that has left on it. That's true, and it's this is this is rough here. We got Sasha in the mid lane with D Fox. It's possible that they get some stuns up. Unfortunately, they do not have enough clear speed to do this. And Sonic not really doing enough with that Lucian Leona right. lane. You're expecting There's a lot of kills stuff. on that, and instead they get it turned around on them. I'm not so sure about this one. I'm I'm really thinking that uh, other picks might have been a little more beneficial. Right. Maybe so the Ted's gonna, pick. Ted's gonna back here, and he's gonna get forty percent crit with the Infinity Edge and the Zeal. Now here we see that Sonic has gone for the uh, the Cutlass, not finished the Bork, and gone for Berserker Greaves. Which it might have been that's the money he had. It's what he had to do. Yeah, I think he had a very unfortunate buy. 
Right, but they can't fight that lane anymore. Two v two. Yeah, all. his it, it's pretty much over with with that lane. One hundred percent. Like they, they're doing they're they're doing what they should be doing right now, which is Sonic and Sasha needs to be coming up the top side. They can fight the Garen if they do it correctly. I know that the Cutlass will be able to help out with a lot of the battling, but without the the full Bork, there's no way you're killing a Garen who has you know twenty four hundred health, plenty of damage. You know, there's no way. And they have the rotations coming up. Darth Titan and a Duelma going to be rotating up there. They're seen in the wards, but Mountain is just in a rough spot right now. Yep, they're the the clean division perfectly here in the river. They're gonna miss that one in the in the top side river bush, but just teaching this tower with uh, Ted being as strong as he is as uh, Sivir, they clear the wave instantly. He gets a free attack of tower. Nobody's gonna stop him. Yeah, this is this is the uh, this is the scary part right here because. Darth Ted is in a point where he is incredibly powerful. Blaze Nerd is looking to do the damage, although they have the dive going on. Here comes the flash. Same flash. On to Darth Ted. Un Unstream gets the gets the kill. Sonic gets the kill on Blaze Nerd. This is exactly what they needed in order to get the, themselves back in this game. So Sky an overreach to the top there side, but by Scuttle. Yeah, that was just a little overreaching. But Unstream with that perfectly timed flash. Matching up with Darth Ted, considering the past kill when Darth Ted died, he had to flash and Unstream had to flash to kill him. It is still synced up. And if they keep this up, Unstream neutralizing Darth Ted is going to be a big deal. But here comes Skyrockets. Looking to do the thing. The damage is yes, coming out onto Leona. Skyrockets trying to get that kill, but getting himself it's baited up. Sonic is there. So is everyone is there. This is the 5v1 dog pile on, but gets the kill on the Sasha, Sasha walking too close. It's <laughs> Whoops. The other four had it, and uh, it's not worth giving away that kill for a 1v1. Agreed. That was an oopsie. You know that uh, she's sitting in chat like, I don't know why I did that. I thought I could stun. But that's okay. They just got to yeah, shake that one off, knowing that this tower is going to go down immediately. Just going to walk up, tap the tower, go in. But, but they do have Defox and Sonic there. So Defox's ult is down. I wonder if they do remember that. He we'll has see. decent wave players. Just that there's no way they can actually defend this turret. Yeah, exactly. They can defend tier two. But they're going to have to get someone else in here right now. It can't just be them two versus the four, versus four. And especially if Sonic gets tagged with any more of those bombs, he's going to go down. T-Box is out of mana here. I think he has to leave. Yeah, it's true. He will get mana back from his, uh, his E bouncing to different targets. But it is uh, not great right now. I think if Scuttle stays here, they take this tier two with almost no pressure on them. I mean, you have Skyrockets pushing top too. So they're getting you know pressure in multiple lanes. They're gonna rotate the bot here, shove that up. Endo probably takes this on his own because he's he's trying, you know, trundle. Uh, but unfortunately, he is gonna pay his life for it. Whoops! All right. <laughs> Did not respect the nocturne, and that's exactly what what to expect when you're playing against a nocturne. Clearly, and unstream... that's what they want with that pick, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's that's the whole point of what unstream's trying to do. Exactly. Uh, so here's a big thing we saw from a Duma with that experience in a bottle, making sure that 420 Blazer keeps up with the experience, and you love to see that as a support. But we got the Baron call going right now. There is four looking at it. They do not have a top laner. And yeah, Skyrock is going to find this out real TV. quick. This is going to go very poorly if they continue right. to fight Sonic this Baron. Sonic finishes Bork, but it's still not enough damage to take this down. Especially when they know Unstream Soul is down. They can just engage here. Drofig looking to do some fighting. Blaze Nerd caught, find himself caught out, but he is tanky enough to weather the storm and allow the teams to go back to the farming lanes. Damn. So maybe they were looking to start it and get a pick there. Not intending to take the Baron all because they couldn't realistically with their damage. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think uh, I think you nailed it with that one. So you saw the the almost Baron call for that. Do you think that is something that if it was not spotted out by Skyrockets could have been the, uh, the correct call? I mean, the correct call maybe. The problem is that whether the call is correct or not, you still have to have the damage and the stats to back it up. I don't think they take that Baron anywhere near quick enough to make it matter because as soon as all five of you go missing off the map and you're taking baron at the you know snail plate uh, pace they just converge on you with a civil roll and kill you and so if I they wait it, long it, enough correct you've, you've nicely weakened baron for them right so i think it's correct that they they go to the baron they bait them there and they turned off correctly they, they take a fourth of the baron damage and as soon as somebody shows they all back off at the same time and they turn on them exactly. so i think that's probably the call Agree with that. Agree with that. That was a good call. 
So we have Endo looking at, he's taking a lot of damage. Oh, oh. the best friend Baron helping out. Defox says, Endo, nice job clearing those wards, but me and my best buddy, sixth man Baron coming out, getting the kill. So now you have a decent Baron fight here. The problem is that Skyrock is going to shove this up. And Drop that's the guys, thing. No TP. The, the thing is, we got the Merc Treads on Drofig. We got the Sunfire Cape finally finished with some armor. But he really is, he still cannot fight that Garen yet. And Skyrakus has CP and Drofig doesn't. So if you want to start that Baron, all Skyrakus does is, says, all right, fine, here's the wave, smash it in your inhib tower, and I'm going to go join Baron. That's true. And we do have a See Mountain ya. Drake coming up right now, is the thing. So we have double Air Drake on, uh, double Air Drake on the side of. This is a great play uh, with several in the Air Drakes. Exactly. Again, nicely oh my goodness, Sasha, Sasha though, that was good. She's walking back. Here comes here comes Skyrockets rolling in, trying to do it, but gets out. Sonic finding himself in a bad position was not watching the map. He's going to have to dash out of there. Flash is out of the way. The Nocturne ult defensively used, although we have Blazit Nerd in a terrible position. He was just going in for the for He's the kill and just there, decided, like, oh, shit, my bad, everybody. Right. I question the wrong spot. The Nocturne ult there because on stream was kind of already in position to collapse anyway. But we have a collapse here. This looks really good for Mountain Drake. Drofig was was uh, <laughs> silenced and pushed in the other direction. But again, Baron do a lot of damage to Endo right now. Sonic's Sonic in, in the bad Baron. position. Again, does not have Flash to get himself out of it, but Sasha is here to help out. Whew. Got to be careful there, Sonic. You're going to get caught by the Garen, and that's going to be a bad time for everyone. And we see Sonic here going for the kind of old-school Lucian build of working a Black Cleaver, where he's going right for that armor pen. As opposed to any attack speed besides those Berserker groups. Nice damage on the Ted there from uh, Sonic Wing the Baron with Lucian W. So here's the problem. I'm going to zoom out really far here. As we see Skyrock is just pushing it up. The towers are kind of low. And you can see some of the vision, right? Uh, back and forth between the two. So the teams right now are looking to get some position. And the dragon is just about to spawn on the bot side. So we're looking I mean, at here, they're going to just take this mountain dragon. And that's... That is the dragon that this team wants. Exactly. Scuttlecrab take wants that. to and take Unstream this does not have ult. They can't contest this at all. They give it up. Unstream, you see, it immediately ignores it and moves right to Baron's side to try to get better vision or maybe collapse on Skyrockets. It is possible. If Skyrockets does stay here. He is going for it. Sonic they is might not get it. there in time to save Sonic. Sonic is falling very low. Oh, he flips him into Sonic right now. Just okay, stay in the bush, right. Sonic. Sonic gets the kill into Skyrockets. That was dangerous, putting himself in that position. We've seen Skyrockets flash Q alt people before. So this is... They lost the Mountain Drake, but this is five people on the top side here. Four Mountain. And they're going to start the Baron right up right now. Exactly. Which you can see... For, you can see them doing that immediately. They, 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 Scuttlecrab knows that Baron is being started. So here it comes. Blazing Nerd, here comes an alt. They get the slow on Endo if they get the, the kill here. Flipping him into doing the damage. Sonic is falling low. They're going to have to help make sure that the kill for Sonic is falling very low. Endo gets the kill. This is a very interesting team fight. Unstream having to flash on the backside using his Q for the uh, the movement speed. Uh, Adoma putting out. the Q on the target might be enough to kill him now. His, his Umbral Blades does it. Falls very low, though. And that was Adoma's flash to bomb him there when he was going to live. That was true. It, it was so, very close. I think Unstream would have died had he not humble. He uh, his passive was up, and he got the auto attack off to give him some healing. Right. Defox gets the great flash off to dodge four twenty blaze at nerd. Def or uh, Darth Ted is looking to do it. Oh, he gets the silence off. This could be really close for Defox. Garen does have his ult. He will probably and die Ted's right caught. here. Here comes the ultimate. Yep. Ah, uh, this is too much damage here on Team Scuttle. Keep going, talk it up. What we got? Oh, Skyrockets. All right. Skyrockets, again, getting to that point with Garen where you can just run in and get the damage off. And he's all armor, we have to point out here. He's got a Bramble, a Cloth, Ninja Tabbies, Dead Mans, and a, and a Black Cleaver. So Malzahar actually has a very good target here with the max health damage on his ult onto Skyrockets, who has no MR at all. The only unfortunate part is that no one else on Team Mountain does any magic damage. Exactly. And that the thing is... Malzahar will absolutely melt Garen, for sure. He does have the Leandries and the Crystal Scepter, so everything he does is going to be doing ton and ton of damage to the targets. But then the problem becomes if you if you dump everything on Malzahar and into Skyrockets, the rest of the team just runs you down and kills you. That's true. That's true. But Skyrockets is aggressive, so hopefully they hopefully they play that right. This is going to be a it's going to be a tough one. Mountain well, is in the kill it. lead. Um, this is very interesting. Unstream is holding it down strong with his 8 and 2. 
He played that pr fight pretty well. He's able to go to the back line and, and cause a lot of havoc, having to right. make them chase him instead of chasing now the rest of the team, potentially saving the Baron with that play. And he has ult here. He also got he went back and got a BF sword and a stopwatch. <laughs> that is a awesome so, buy. Probably going obviously for this Guardian Angel, but even right now it's still a really strong buy for him. But he can get into the back line, destroy them with the dust blade and the BF sword. The looking stopwatch at the collapse he has here. To. Look at here on the top side. They have two two potential collapses. Skyrockets if he goes too far forward. I, I was gonna say Blazonard was in a tough position. D Fox with his ultimate up could catch that target, followed by Nocturne right. means a, a dead whatever you hit. They're very split now though, if you notice. There, there's it seems like Mountain uh, they they want to do a lot of different things, but this is just a, a five man. Unstream did not Scuttle hit Cop his runner right in there. Oh, everything comes down. Here comes a big fight on the top side. Nocturne using his ultimate was not able to get the damage off. But they're trying to do everything they can. Sonic being run down by the Trundle. Endo falling back. The taking a tower shot. Flashes line. away. Late, we got Drofig teleporting in. Skyrockets ultimates on Sonic. But but then gets immediately ult. Hits by Malazar, Malazahar's Ooh, ultimate. Dark Ted falling very low with the damage. Not able to get it incredibly low. Honestly, not for how that, that fight started, that went very well for Mountain for a 2 for 2. That was yeah. a five-man scuttle team pushing into Mountain essentially being caught. A TP from Drafik turns into a two two for two. And that yeah. could have been a lot worse. That was unfortunate. Unstream was not able to hit his spell shield in time to prevent the pull from from Nautilus. I think that would have changed the scape of the fight. And without not uh, Unstream's damage, right. it was a he tough one. He also blows the stopwatch there, which exactly. I, I know he wanted to save for going in to kill somebody and then use it to live. So now it really comes down to a little bit of a Baron Dance, a little bit of a push. They're going to have to try to take some towers as well. They only have one on the side of Mountain. It's a lot so of gold lot that of, they're missing. It's a lot of standing gold right for Mountain here. So they're only behind 3,000 here, which is a significant amount. But again, there's a lot of standing gold here where if they can rotate correctly, they can tie this game from standing gold on the towers. Knowing that they are doing Ocean right now, I think the, bear, the call is Baron right now. The call is Baron, right. Like they should just, just go. They're hesitating slightly. They're clearing the ward, so now they know. But they're still just doing ocean. They they could do this right now if they if they were wise about it, they could make it happen. I think they're they're trying to baron bait again here. I think death brush is a good idea right now too. It's it's worked for them in the past. I think they're just trying to go for the same thing. I, I think right now they should have done a death brush. They're just backing up. I think they're hoping to see if they can catch somebody. But Scuttle's playing it smart. Yep, Scuttle doesn't bite, and now they're gonna lose all that vision there in the baron pit. Everything everything they just placed is instantly wiped out here. Additionally, having the the pinks in there now they scuttle can just start Baron and they have to check it. It's just going to be really difficult, and it's going to drop very quickly. They have that Mountain yep. Drake. They have the three item Sivir with a Guardian Angel. But here comes the big fight. Drofig is already in it. Nocturne coming out hits him with the Nocturne up, but does not actually fly in yet. Wait till the last possible second, looking to try to get the snipe off onto a Duma. Duma has to flash off of that, but Darth Ted is still there, putting out the damage. Sasha is not dead. Darth Ted getting stunned Sonic's up. Untouched. Sonic is there. He's doing the work right now, getting the Guardian Angel pop. Defox is there as well. Sivir's gonna have a hard time. That was a well-timed triple kill from Defox. Beautiful fight there by Mountain, but I have to say, pretty poor execution by Scuttle there. Yeah, they that was had a tough the vision. One. They had the, and then they just kind of got jumped on. They and, have oh, a well, full life. Oh, but he spell zero. shields the ultimate from Skyrockets, but there is too much damage coming out from that spin to win. Defox and mean, Sonic not able to do it, and there's no way they're taking Baron by itself, so they just have yeah, to he stopped, he walk away with the tails. Right tails between the legs. Oh, they are looking to 2v, 2v1 this man, and he is having to walk away. Also knowing that, though, that person does a lot of magic damage, and I have no magic resistance. Right, and now we've essentially evened up the game after that fight. That was a 3,000 gold Baron power play there, only down by a little over, what, 1,000 gold? 1,100 yep. gold right now. Uh, not quite get the Baron, not quite a power play, but so to speak, that fight was a big deal yeah, for Team have, Mountain. We have Defox here getting a blue buff. He's he's very strong. 6-1. and one. He's going to back here. Maybe he picks up the Zonias, something like that. And they yeah. can, and, and Mountain is showing that they can fight these fights as long as they're neutral ground. If they're not exactly getting caught right. out, unstream engaging, they can fight these fights. And you have to look at, uh, you have to look at the Voli Bear right now. Stum started to be a big tank, getting the Bramble Fest, has Sunfires, has the Dead Man's Plate. Sivir's looking significantly less strong right now because she can't just kill the Voli Bear on the front line. 
Right, and also if you look at both these top laners, they're all armor all the whole way. We have a null magic here on Skyrocket Split. It's actually really, really good for Drophic here because the only AP damage on their team here from Scuttle is Zillion. And it's not like he wants to just throw bombs on Volibear. Exactly. That's not that's not the target you're looking to hit with your bombs, that's for sure. And additionally, uh, we're really looking at right now the team, the damage of of uh, Mountain looking out here. But Defox is finding himself caught. Here comes the Nautilus. Uh, does exactly what it's supposed to do to uh, to de deter them. But Defox right. is still finding himself in a tough position. He He's might still running them around though. Popped up, but that was enough time. He bought enough time and had the wherewithal to walk in the correct direction to bring his team into the fight. Nah, but Skyrockets gets a tier two for it. That is true. And they're going to rotate slowly. I think not everyone should rotate up there. I think that's exactly what they want. But actually, they are caught out here. Defox finding himself in the front position, putting the damage out there. They're just, wow. And it's a beautiful shutdown, too. So so now, not only is Defox super strong, he gets a shutdown goal on top of that. That was sick. Tell me why that matters. Um, well, here why comes it a team fight, though. Hold on. A single quick server slash. There's a three person stun numbers. coming in. Endo fucking falling in the back line. Gets popped up. Sonic has to flash over the wall, but flashes into yeah, the Sasha damage on the there. other side. Sasha sitting there trying to tank this up for the rest messy. of the team. Defox doing the damage, but the, it's falling down too quickly. They do not have it to follow it up. Defox trying to do the best they can. Gets the kill onto Darth Ted, but Endo, Blazin, Nerd, and Aduma are left. That is an ace for Team Scuttlecrab. It's Everyone a five is low. Or two there, and that actually could have gone way better with better execution. There I was agree no with that. Tell, tell me a little more, more about what happened in that fight that they could not execute well. So I feel like they took the fight when they didn't have to. Um, as you saw, Sasha flashed over the wall to get on Ted when they were already disengaging the fight. We know that Defox doesn't have ult, he just used it in top lane. They see that. And all of a sudden, they, they decide, oh, well, they're here, we have to fight. And, and you don't have to. That is true. And now, now we're looking at a tough spot, spot here because they have one inhibitor down. They have an open inhibitor on the top side. They're going to be pushing the bot lane. Blizzard not with them in the top. Decided to push up the bot lane here. So now we have a, uh, a difficult proposition. If you're Team Mountain, what do you do? Them, yeah. They have an open Baron. You have an open base. What's the, what's the call? The call here is you need to play around Defox to get picks here. Because like I was just saying before as that fight started out, there is not a single Quick Silver Sash on this entire team. There is not a, a cleanse on this entire team. You have Sivir. Darth Ted has his... Uh, well, his GA is coming back up. But that's it. And Defox is 8-2. Any type of roaming through the jungle where you have vision, you catch one person out, you just blow them up. And then you can rotate. And that's true. I think there's a very high possibility that if Mountain extend their vision a little further out, they might be able to, to create themselves a position like a death brush in order to kill their entire team. Or at least catch somebody, like you said. Catching a Garen, catching out a Trundle, perhaps... Uh, right. Yeah, you, catching you out a Nautilus. You might not catch Ted, but like catching out a Frontliner and then killing them instantly, it gives you a ton of pressure to push your wards up and then take more objectives. And then with the Malzahar cooldown that he has, if you catch out a tank and kill him and you start pushing your vision up, by the time they actually get there, the other team, you have it back up again. Do it again. Here's the other scary part. We got five drakes on the side yeah, it's, of Scuttle. It's, uh, the movement speed is incredible. If they ever touch a tower, it's dead. They only and have three left to take. Two mountain drakes means Baron does not live for very long. Not at all. They and have no vision right now. That's their let's idea. Take look, let's take a look at what they can see. Almost nothing. I'm, I'm showing a very Nobody blank screen. Nobody will get there in time. Let's look at this damage. 8,000, 7,000, 6,000. Here, here it comes. Oh. Ted's not Going a good target in. here, though. because oh. Blue team slays the Baron, but Unstream goes in. See if they can get some kills. Flashes out for some extra damage. Sasha going in. Drofig is there. Skyrockets executes Unstream. This is not looking good. Defox was not in this fight. This is going to be a full wipe right here. Defox looking Sasha to do some damage. Trouble. Seeing if they can't kill the Skyrocket. Sonic is by himself in this. It is Defox versus the world right now. Big team fight. Here comes the speed up. Blaze it nerd looking to get the stun off I onto Defox. They're play. running him around. Gets hit with the hook. This does not bode well. This is going to be a quick cleanup. Yep. Followed by the ace. Followed Kill by him, the right the, of the game. Uh, all the way up. Excellent play there by 420 Blaze to just flash on him, get rid of the spell shield, and then Q him and say, fine, we'll just take the game. Defox leaving slightly early, not really feeling like waiting for the end of it there. 
That is a tough one from Scuttle. They did find the fight that they needed. Two consecutive fights in a row. Bringing the game to a 2-0 victory from Scuttle Crab. Very well played on their part. What do you have to say about this game? I think Scuttle looks fantastic, but at the same time, um, there was a little bit of sloppiness. The, as you said, they, Mountain brought the game back to almost a gold lead twice. And then kind of threw fights to give it back. So uh, they had the right idea. The execution was not great. Right, Getting caught out always essentially loses shoot the game 37 minutes in. So, uh, yeah, there's a hope for Mountain here because they, they looked like they were keeping all the punches, you know. They were sticking with them. Oh, absolutely. That the thing about that is they were, they were looking so so good. It was just, it was just a couple fights that went in the wrong direction, in in really in both games. I mean, it's just it's just really a tough one there. Yeah, something goes wrong here. A little thing goes wrong here. I dash here. I flash here. We lose the fight, and those things happen in League of Legends. That's why we play the game. Exactly. Exactly. So who are we looking to who are we looking to talk to on? Uh, on Team Scuttle here. Who do you think is the the people that that deserve the the voice? Hey man, I'm the voice of the underdog here, so I like pulling in people who aren't just the carries. I think we should pull in uh, the people who don't get all the you know the cred all the time, like 420 Blaze it. 420 Blaze it. All right, you got I like, it. I like that he went one five and seventeen because that score line. We look at it, you're like, oh, one and five. He had some phenomenal plays in that game. Absolutely. In the game number two, for sure. The first game as well, he had, he had a couple unfortunate things in the first game, but he also had some great plays. Right, right. And he's he's kind of like the enabler of Ted there, where Ted is, is is carrying the game, but, you know, as AD carries, no, you're nothing without your support. Are we looking to bring up, uh, what do you think, Skyrockets is the other player? I like Skyrockets here, too. Agreed. All right, I'll be getting them in just a second. Be grabbing them in here, getting their names on the screen we got Skyrockets, we got 420, Blaze It, <laughs> Blaze It Nerd 69. <laughs> uh, that's going to be my first question. All right, let me pull them into this. We're going to be talking about their 2-0 victory uh, over the, over the uh, Mountain Drake team. All right, let's bring them in here. We got Skyrockets. Welcome, Skyrockets. Hey, how's it going? And welcome, 420 Blazer Nerd 69 to the cast. Hey. Congratulations on your 2-0 victory over Team Mountain. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Hard fought. Absolutely hard fought. Hard fought indeed. Skyrockets, how are you feeling about those previous games? I feel good. You know, just doing the top lane thing, tanking some damage, you know. So tell me a little bit. Of, all right, game number one. Game number one, Nautilus on 420, Blazer in 69, and we got Nasus on the top side. Tell me a little bit about, you got double banned out, they took away your Mundo, they took away your Garen, falling all the way back to Nasus, but how did that top lane feel for you? It looked pretty good. Yeah, it felt great. Like, nice thing about Nasus, if you pull the wave back, just sit there, farm for a little while, and once you start uh, getting some stacks, you can kind of turn it around, start bullying the lane a bit, pushing into their tower, and... Uh, I wasn't getting ganked too often either, which made it pretty easy. But after the laning phase, I was strong and you know felt like we could keep pushing forward with it. Right, and your team played around it really well by Definitely. giving you the time to farm when they were making plays across the map. Yeah, so I thought like that was very well executed. Unstoppable stacks. Oh, absolutely. You had a ton of stacks. You were at 240 by 12 minutes. You were at a little over 500 by 18. It was absolutely disgusting. And... What was the what was the thought process? Did you call it out? Did someone else call it out when you did the flash wither into uh, all in on the cart that's at the end of the game that allowed you all to steamroll through the base on the top side? Uh, I wanted it. <laughs> uh, so someone mentioned that Karthus was uh, out of place and trying to come back in, and I was running towards him and realized he got around the wall a little quicker than I could. So then I was like, you know what? I guess let's just kind of go full force with this, jump the wall got the wither on him and at that point my team followed up so i said look even if i die i think i did you know at least half his health in one q type thing so uh kind of folded pretty quickly after that yeah they backed you up and then you just immediately together as a team walked through the top part of their base taking game number one uh, and speaking of game number one and game number two 420 you were playing uh or would you like to call me 420 blaze it nerd or 69 
Hey, right. whatever you want, brother. Whatever, whatever, whichever's easiest for you. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll respond to whatever. Absolutely. So you got you got Nautilus in both games. What was the pick? Was that in response to anything that Mountain was doing, or is that something that's comfortable for you? I mean, not. It's definitely one of my comfort picks for sure. I think our game plan going into it was sort of get Darth Ted on the Sivir, get a scaling comp, because uh, we knew their jungler. He's good on the Nocturne. You know, he put the J4 pick in the first game, the Nocturne pick the second game. Uh, we knew we were going get, to be getting pressured, you know, early on. So getting the scaling of Sivir and, you know, being able to have unlimited CC during team fights, Absolutely. Uh, you know, is just sort of something that always comes in handy. So. Uh, especially when you know when it comes to locking down champs like Nocturne and Lucian, who if you just sort of let them go, they you know they'll they'll just rip through the entire team. So being able to just you know one auto and and have a CC and you know have enabling the Sivir to turn and start melting is just so beneficial. Um, it's a comp that I think is just very synergistic in the bot lane. It looked phenomenal, and I want to ask you a question about that. Who is making these calls on your team for these? Because a lot of those Sivir turns with your ults, when you just run into them, they they look so clean. They look so perfect. Yeah, and definitely Darth Ted. He's doing most of the shot calling in the bot lane. He's he he's uh you know good at recognizing when we have that opportunity and how much damage he can put out at once. Um, uh, but you know executing on that is sort of you know a team thing where we're all just sort of. You know, our comms are sort of all just, you know, they line up and we, you know, we execute and that's really what matters. That's definitely what matters. And it shows in that 2-0 victory. This time a little, uh, a little closer there as Mountain gave you a little run for your money. So tell yeah. me, so tell me when you were playing that pick ban phase and you let the Nautilus through, did you purposefully do that? Or was that something that you're like, oops, we forgot about the Nautilus? I, I, I'm more, I more so think that uh, we wanted to ban that Karthus away. He went, you know, he went 4-0 pretty early that first game. Um, luckily, we were able to win a few key team fights and and just take that into the into the nexus. But uh, as you know, having a 4-0 Karthus, fine um, in any scenario. So uh, <laughs> yeah. when he when he when. Uh, uh, their mid laner, you know, did well in that. We were like, okay, let's just take that away. Um, you know, we can deal with the Nocturne. And you definitely showed it. Nocturne did put a lot of hurt on you guys, but you're ultimately able to make those plays not quite enough and allow you to take the victory. Right, through team fights. I have a question here for Skyrockets. Oh, you too, Blizzard. You guys are 4-0 now. You're in first place in the, in the league right now. What are your expectations for this team? What do you guys feel like is your ceiling? I, I, I think we're, you know, we're still moving people around, you know, you know, flexing different positions, different champions. But I mean, it's a legacy, right? The history with Scuttle Crab has been one of uh, domination. So uh, we want to carry that. Uh, we want to carry that on. I think we got <laughs> we got oh, some talented. <laughs> Hell yeah. We got yeah. some talented players here. Yeah. If you, you know, it's like the Patriots. They're going to keep going to the playoffs, keep going to the finals. Right. You. Oh yeah, Ready take it this you year. You heard it here year. first. It's Scuttle coming. Crab equals the Patriots. Yeah, get him <laughs> oh, out. Oh yeah, here. very good. So, so my final question: If Scuttle Crab is the Patriots, who is the Tom Brady and who is the Gronkowski of your team? I I fancy myself a Gronkowski. I don't know. <laughs> I'd give I'd give. Uh... You're broken and on your way out. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! All right, continue. I'd who you got the Tom Brady? Who's the Who's the star player? Who's the golden boy? Darth Ted's, you know, making a bunch of calls for us all the time, so kind of feel like he drives a lot of the situations that happen. Um, yeah. Yep. Your bot lane looked phenomenal. I mean, it's, it, 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 you know, if we put him in a position where he can, you know, take the game away, he's just going to run, take it and run. So uh, that, that that kind of Tom Brady mentality is definitely in his hands. Well, well done to you two. Phoenix, do you have any more questions for these two winners of today's games? That is it. Congratulations, guys. You look great. Do you have anything else you hey. want to say to the cast out there and the rest of the rec league? Oh, yeah, guys. Team Scuttle, we're here and we're, we're here to stay. Watch out. You heard it. Team Scuttle Crab taking in. Thank you for watching game number two. We do have one more game, one more series for tonight. So stick with us. We'll be back in just about five to ten minutes. Don't go away. <laughs>